Welcome to Scotland is Now, Race to Zero, a two-day conference brought to you by Team Scotland, a partnership approach led by Scottish Development International and Scottish Government. We hope that you were able to join several of our sessions yesterday and look forward to the sessions today. Full details of our programme and our fantastic speakers can be found on the conference website, www.scotlandracetozero.co.uk. I am Mary Henderson from Scottish Development International, and I'm here to introduce our next session, which is Growing the Green Economy in Conversation with the Scottish National Investment Bank. And I'd now like to hand over to Muir Dickey from the Financial Times, who will be chairing the discussion. Muir. Thank you, Mary. Yes, I'm Muir Dickey. I'm the Scotland Correspondent for the Financial Times, and I'm delighted to be here today to discuss the, uh, the role and the potential of the new Scottish National Investment Bank a mission-led development bank in Scotland's first. With me will be Fiona Hislop, the Cabinet Secretary for Economy, Fair Work and Culture, the Scottish Government, and Willie Watt, the Chair of the Scottish National Investment Bank. The bank was founded at the end of last year and will make strategic and long-term invest, long investments in businesses, projects and communities through debt and equity. It's intended to operate commercially while delivering social and environmental returns and to provide patient capital to build a stronger, fairer and more sustainable Scotland. Fiona Hislop is the Cabinet Secretary for Economy Work. She's been a member of the Scottish Parliament since its creation in 1999 and a Cabinet Secretary who's also previously dealt with education and uh, culture and external affairs. Willie Watt has uh, since uh, November been the chair of the bank. Before that, he were, or, uh, since 2016, he's been a member of the advisory board of Scottish Equity Partners and a board member of the National Galleries of Scotland. He retired in December 2019 from Martin Curry, the investment management firm, after 19 years as its chief executive and laterally as chair of the board. So we're very pleased to be here with you both. Um, Fiona, perhaps if you would like to start off with a, a, a short introductory remarks and letting us know about the government's hopes for this new investment bank. Well, good morning, Muir, and good morning, everyone. Uh, the Scottish National Investment Bank uh, opened for business in November 2020 uh, and is potentially the single most important economic development opportunity in the lifetime of this Scottish Parliament. And it is the first mission-oriented investment bank in the UK. And the bank, through the long-term missions the Scottish go government ministers have set for it, will address key societal challenges, it will shape future markets, spark innovation, and deliver a range of environmental, social, and economic returns. And the mission-led approach is crucial because it allows the bank to address social challenges as it invests in economic opportunities. The bank's primary mission will be to support achieving a just transition to net zero by 2045. And the bank has been proactively engaging with stakeholders across Scotland to identify projects with both immediate and future financing requirements. And by aligning the bank's aims and objectives with Scotland's economic strategy, uh, the bank has the potential to transform Scotland's economy. It will provide patient and growth capital, uh, debt and equity for businesses and projects across Scotland and catalyze private sector investment. Now, the Scottish government ha has committed two billion pounds to capitalize the bank and it's clear that there is a need uh, for a bank with ambition and vision to address Scotland's economic priorities in a sustainable and inclusive and ethical way. And the bank will provide a source of long-term finance in partnership with the private sector uh, to invest in ambitious companies and low carbon infrastructure. And it is key in supporting Scotland's transition to net uh, to a net zero future. So, it has uh, the principles of equality, transparency, diversity and inclusion and the way the bank operates will define it as an ethical and trusted in institution. So COVID undoubtedly has been the defining challenge of, of this last year. Um, however, the climate crisis remains the defining challenge of our generation. And so Scotland's recovery must be a green one. And the bank is crucial to our response to restart and reshape that economy. Thank you very much for that. You, you mentioned two billion as the committed capital. Do you think that could be increased if, if uh, resources permit? 
Well, clearly the ambition and the vision of the, of the bank is central to what we're doing. So uh, on the basis, we just passed our budget uh, yesterday in the Scottish Parliament. So I'm pleased that we've secured the funding that we need uh, for the, the next year. But clearly in terms of our ambitions, uh, we would want to try and corral and bring together the uh, power, the economic power and the financial resources that the Scottish Government behind the bank. So uh, you know, I, I would see that it has a strong prospect, but to give it the certainty to plan the two billion of capitalization is there um, and is committed to uh, just now. But I think the opportunities for the bank and a whole variety of different infrastructure uh, measures across the country would enable it uh, to guarantee and uh, potentially attract other investment. But remember, it's not all about public investment. Uh, the leverage that the bank itself can, can bring uh, to help uh, bring in uh, additional private sector investment to key projects and collectively how we can marshal the great offering we have for a green portfolio of investments uh, and internationally as well as domestically, I think will prove increasingly attractive. So do I think the bank will grow? Yes, I do. Well, clearly the government has high hopes for your bank. Tell us a bit about where you've got to so far. Uh, thank you, uh, Muir. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I think you've both done an excellent job of introducing the bank and you've pretty much said what, uh, what I was going to say. Um, but uh, I'll try and kind of ex uh, expand and deepen uh, that. Um, we've, uh, I, as you both said, we've been launched for a few months. Prior to that, we've hired a very experienced professional uh, CEO who comes with a, a strong infrastructure background, infrastructure investment background, um, uh, who has uh, invested in green infrastructure throughout her career. We've put together uh, a, a very uh, professional independent board to make sure that the governance of the bank is uh, first, uh, first rate. Um, and uh, we have um, focused uh, our um, um, investment generation function on the missions that we've been set. Uh, the preeminent mission is the uh, transition to net zero, supporting that. But we are also uh, tasked uh, with uh, investing um, to tackle place-based inequality and harnessing innovation to build wealthier, healthier and a fairer Scotland. Um, now, the way that we uh, look at these missions is that they interact with each other. Um, so we've made two investments so far. One was uh, very much aimed at innovation, but part of that company's product range was building lasers for satellites um, that measure uh, carbon uh, usage across the globe. And it's one of the key tools uh, for tackling, uh, for, for at least understanding the backdrop to climate change. Um, and uh, the place-based uh, investment we made focused on um, a low-cost housing uh, aimed uh, at um, key workers um, and in that investment the bank's role was to insist that the homes that are being built are at, the, uh, are, are at a high environmental and low carbon standard. Um, so that's an example of how our missions can interact together um, um, to, uh, uh, to, to, to meet our mission requirements. Um, as has been mentioned earlier, we are a commercial uh, investor as well as a mission investor. We don't see any conflict between those things. We believe that we are stewards of public capital, as the Cabinet Secretary has said, and therefore we have to invest in the highest professional investment standards uh, that we can. Um, but equally, we think that there are a significant number of projects that meet those professional standards and have the mission benefits that uh, we uh, that we seek. Um, it's important that we stay on the right side of uh, our state aid brief. Um, our job is to crowd in uh, private investment. It's not to replace the private sector. So we have to make commercial investments uh, in a space where the private sector at the moment is not investing. And that's a really important part of our brief because there's no point in public money replacing private capital. It should be additive to private capital, and that's uh, an important part uh, of uh, our brief. Um, um, the Cabinet Secretary has laid out our financing 
um, um, promise, if you will, um, in her opening remarks. Um, what I would add to that is that it's the bank's ambition to manage third-party capital and to raise uh, third-party capital to invest alongside the public capital that is part of our brief. Um, now, that is something that will require us to uh, gain the necessary uh, approvals and authorizations. Uh, we'll have to build a team with the right level of investment professionalism, and we'll have to demonstrate that we can source and find projects that other capital would be interested in financing with us. Um, but that certainly is uh, our ambition. So I'll maybe pause there and hand back to you, Muir. Let's ask the Cabinet Secretary first. And um, What makes you think that there is a need for this bank? Why is the private sector uh, investment community not uh, playing this role? So some of the, the areas that we want to look at are tackling inequalities and a place-based agenda. Now, if you look at the geography of Scotland, and, and we're not too dissimilar to uh, many parts of the world where you've got dispersed populations. Yes, we've got um, cities and, and we've got to tackle some of the issues there. But how do we unlock the potential of the natural assets that Scotland has in abundance in terms of our coastline, our, our energy, renewable energy, our wave, our tidal, etc.? Uh, but also identify how do we uh, help generate some of our, our further remote areas. So I'm, I, I mean, I can't tell the bank what to invest. They're operationally independent. But some of the exciting opportunities to tackle inequalities in further and remote areas, I think will be of interest, especially in world leading technology, which Scotland has in abundance and no doubt been discussed in other, uh, other sessions. In terms of tackling um, inequalities, and, and we've seen from COVID that actually it's driven inequalities. Our world will have to become more codependent, and we've got to use the ECGs in a way that actually is, is, is their source, which is about sustainability, and that means for everybody. So in tackling inequalities, you can tackle some of the issues around green uh, housing investment with, uh, from the public sector would help match some funding. But, you know, private sector who maybe not been as, as involved in green energy, housing finance and district heating. We've just passed legislation on district heating in Scotland. If you really want to get into hydrogen investment, for example, uh, in projects to, to showcase what can be done that can then be scaled up in other parts of Scotland or indeed the world, there's some really exciting opportunities here. And in international investment partnered with a domestic bank uh, that knows the market, with a government that can provide opportunities of portfolios. Uh, I think there's great opportunities here. Well, William, what, what makes you think that you will be able to generate a decent return while pursuing those very noble goals that the Cabinet Secretary said that? Mm. Um, I, I think um, we start from the premise that um, um, the private sector um, is not necessarily the font of all wisdom when it comes to what is an investable proposition. And I'll give you a good um, uh, example from the low carbon space. Um, if we look back um, 10 years ago, um, um, it was perceived that uh, wind, uh, offshore wind was uh, not a, 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 an investable proposition for the private sector. Um, and um, the Green Investment Bank, which was a state development bank at the time, pioneered in that investment along with a small number of other institutions. And now it's a very well-developed, highly competitive asset class. But those early investments were, um, were commercial. Um, uh, they made positive returns. Um, but what they did was they led the way that, that then allowed others to come in. Um, the cabinet secretary mentions district heat. Um, you know, this is an area where um, the creation of investable propositions is is a really important challenge for uh, for the bank and other investors. And if we can create something that's investable. Um, and that the investment structures around uh, these, th these types of projects um, can deliver com uh, commercial returns, then we think that we can champion something that then will then be taken up by um, the, the private sector. It's, it's one of the reasons why we need to make sure that we do invest commercially. 
Um, you know, the, the first reason I gave was to do with stewardship of public capital. But the second reason is that if we're to crowd in, then it has to be something that people want to be crowded in with. Um, and so if it's not... Um, if it's not commercial, then they won't do that. So and how do we know it's commercial? Um, I, I guess um, we need to make sure that we hire the right people um, uh, who have a track record in making um, and structuring investments uh, in a way that has worked previously. Um, I've tried to do that with the recruitment of our CEO. Um, I've tried to do that with the recruitment of our board. Um, which includes um, people with very good green investment credentials and, and also investment credentials from other uh, spheres. So um, it, it, it is ex it's a very challenging area, but it's one that we pick that challenge up with relish rather than uh, um, with trepidation. It's an interesting question I see from uh, the audience uh, asking for a bit more specifics. They like to know what can be done in low, com low income areas, excuse me, and uh, how people can approach you. So, what kind of pitches do you want, and how should people come to you? Well, um, we, we can invest um, from a million pounds up to 50 million pounds. Uh, that is our remit. Uh, we can also invest in funds that invest in smaller entities. Um, so um, we have a very significant flexibility. We can, as you said in your introduction, Muir, we can uh, invest in projects, um, also community projects. We can invest in um, uh, SMEs, or we can invest with larger companies that might have um, you know, significant challenges in moving, say, their industrial processes from uh, uh, high carbon usage to low carbon usage. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of the types of companies and the types of situation that we can, uh, we can, um, our website is up and running. Um, uh, that's probably the best sort of first entry into our, uh, our business. Um, and um, we have a small team of investment professionals um, um, who are, are, are ready to, um, to have conversations with, with companies about what we do. Now, I should say that um, we are still building that team. You know, we are not up at full operational um, battle speed yet. Um, because it's important that we hire the right people with the right skills, and they're quite difficult to find. Um, so, um, you know, we, we are still in, in build mode, but equally we are very much open for business. A quick uh, response from the audience on that answer. Uh, somebody is saying that they uh, would have thought the bank should be supporting the small and medium enterprise sector, the minimum investment of £1 million seems too high. Uh, will you consider reducing that level? Well, um, I think it's important to consider how the bank operates within the, the broader um, uh, infrastructure of public capital. Um, uh, the, um, the partners of uh, SDI, Scottish Enterprise, has a, a very professional, well-resourced um, investment function um, that specialises in early stage um, investment. Um, and um, I think given that the bank is a, a new player in that um, waterfront, if you will, it's important that we don't uh, duplicate what Scottish Enterprise is doing. Um, and we work very closely with Scottish Enterprise. Um, uh, uh, we discuss opportunities that come to us that maybe Scottish Enterprise should take forward. Scottish Enterprise bring things to us that they feel we can take forward. And what the bank is able to do, I think, that's really important is as a company scales, the bank's capital can scale with it. Um, because we have um, the ability to make um, follow-on investments and make larger investments, we can help to take a company all the way through the stages or a project all the way through uh, the stages. And that's why we're very much complementary to Scottish Enterprise rather than uh, 
um, competing with Scottish enterprise. Perhaps we could pursue that point a bit with the Cabinet Secretary. How do you see the National Investment Bank working with Scottish Enterprise and Scottish Development International? Well, it's key that there's coordination between them. Uh, as we've heard, obviously, Scottish Enterprise will work with particularly um, initial startups and SMEs that need support and investment in that, uh, you know, below £1 million. And I've managed actually just in the last uh, budget to, to make sure that there's good financing in terms of capital and FTs uh, for uh, Scottish Enterprise to, to exercise that. And clearly with SCI, uh, coordination of uh, prospective investment and inward investment clearly critical. So there is that coordination. It's also, I noticed in the, the chat line about supply chains, uh, we are very keen as a government to make sure that we uh, make sure we've got low carbon uh, supply chains and supply chain development and procurement is another key strand of Scottish government activity. And of course, we can share our information, our challenge and what we want to do with Scottish Enterprise and SEI and, and uh, the Scottish National Investment Bank. So it's in, a, it's in a place that this is a whole Scotland, whole country approach. And, and we think we can demonstrate um, that we can do it well. We've got some of the most ambitious climate change targets in the world, you know, but also we're backing that up with policy and investment. Another very specific question, perhaps for you, Willie. Um, in addition to the private sector, can public sector uh, apply for uh, uh, funding from the bank? Um, well, I guess it depends how you define the public sector. Um, I think we certainly would envisage that we will be investing in projects where there is a mix of public and private sector capital. Um, you know, the, the, the housing project that I mentioned earlier on, the, the, the equity for that project was provided by government and then the, the debt for that project was provided by the bank um, and uh, one of the country's largest pension schemes um, working with another private sector investor. So um, uh, that was a good example of... of of, of, of different types of public capital working together. Um, uh, but I think it's perfectly um, 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 fe feasible to see the bank working with the public sector. And in one sense, in a policy sense, I think we can uh, be a bridge uh, between the private and the public sector. Um, and you know, we, as, as the cabinet secretary said, we're, we're, we operate entirely independently in our decision-making uh, but equally, we, we do have access to a government and there may be opportunities for us to um, help to shape um, projects in a way that makes them more deliverable. Um, and, and, you know, that's something that I think we're, we're keen to explore. Um, and then, of course, there are other institutions that, um, you know, universities, would you define those as being in the public sector or not there? in you know, some kind of very specific category, but you know, I, could, I could envisage us working with universities uh, uh, in, in a number of different ways. So I, I think uh, a bit long-winded answer to your question, but yes, I do see us working with the public sector. A question here uh, on where the bank will sit with respect to supporting wave and tidal energy projects. Is that something that you have looked at or will be looking at? Uh, I mean, I, I think I, I don't want to be uh, too specific um, about particular um, types of project, but, it, but, it's, but it's, it, it's important that the bank looks at all uh, new energy sources. Um, and um, as the Cabinet Secretary said, uh, if we can champion the commercialization of, of an energy source um, that takes it from something that at the moment is in um, uh, experimental uh, stages to something that is truly commercially viable, then you know, the bank, of, of course, will look at those kinds of, uh, of, of, of those projects. Um, but you know, another one that, that I think is really exciting is hydrogen. Um, and, and, you know, Scotland has the ability potentially to generate hydrogen uh, from, um, from um, low carbon sources. Um, and, you know, I think that's a phenomenally exciting area 
um, uh, um, for the bank to make sure that it that it looks at. Cabinet Secretary, the the mention of uh, wave energy projects will, I'm sure, bring back uh, uh, memories of how difficult that's been for the government and how much how easy it is to to lose uh, public money on on uh, cutting edge technology. How will you? Um, monitor the bank's performance and, and what sort of criteria will you have for deciding whether it's succeeding or not? Well, clearly, as, as a mission-led uh, bank, we want to ensure that it's meeting its missions. That's the whole point in terms of that accountability. And obviously, in terms of uh, my role in, in, in reporting and being accountable to, to, to Parliament, uh, demonstrating the success of enabling. Remember, this is patient capital. This is this is about you know that long-term uh, patient approach to the transformation that we need if we're to get there by 2045, and that, and that is the main area. And, and also reflecting on, on, on the, in the previous point, remember the commercialization and the appetite for uh, particularly offshore wind, uh, you know, floating and fixed, but uh, potentially, I hope in the future, uh, other aspects of our tidal and, and wave potential. There's an, Im an immense commercial interest and investment there already and growing. So therefore, what the bank has to do is what the market won't do. And I think that's a key point. And, and so therefore, what we can be is at the cutting edge and pushing the areas that might not be ready for that mass of EU uh, green investment, of that wall of investment we understand is out there globally. So therefore, we can be that demonstrator in many ways. And, and Scotland is the best place to do this. You know, first with hydrogen buses, first with uh, so much in the, the, the offshore renewable sector, each percent of Europe's uh, offshore energy potential. I mean, this is this is an area that really has, um, you know, I think from a global perspective, um, a real opportunity to be a partner of choice who those, for those investors who want to demonstrate to um, their, their investors, their companies, that they're doing it in an ethical way, they're doing it in an innovative way, and they're doing it with a partner of choice. And I think Scotland can be that demonstrator country in so many different ways. I see a whole host of really interesting questions there, which I'd love to hear answered, but I'm afraid uh, we're running out of time on this on this uh, panel. So perhaps uh, if I could just ask uh, both of you to very briefly uh, con give concluding remarks. So Scotland is an innovative country. We've got uh, the first mission-led bank in the UK. We're supporting that from the government. We also have other government policies that complement that. So we think that we can be a partner for choice for uh, those that are seeking uh, that new green investment. Uh, well, we're, we're open for business. Uh, we're committed to, uh, to meeting our brief uh, we are hugely excited by working with the businesses and people of Scotland to grow uh, a low carbon investment in the country. Uh, and, um, you know, we want to engage with people who have businesses and ideas that they believe the bank can help with. And hopefully this is a good um, starting point, um, you know, or entry point for, for, for people to do that. So, um, Thank you for the opportunity to, 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 to be part of this conversation. Uh, and I'll hand back to you, Mira. Well, thank you both. Uh, it's been a, a very interesting session for me and I hope for our audience. Uh, clearly, this is one of the most interesting new bits of financial architecture in Scotland and the success uh, or otherwise of the bank will be closely watched across the UK and beyond. So I hope that we'll have the opportunity to reconvene at some future point to see how things are going. Uh, I'm now handing back to Mary Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you to the Cabinet Secretary and Mr. Watt for an insightful and interesting discussion. And thank you, audience, for joining us. We hope you can join us for one of the other sessions taking place as part of Scotland is now Race to Zero two-day conference. The programme for today's session is now on your screen and the next session will be Edinburgh's Climate Resilient Re Regeneration at 11 a.m. The link to join the next panel is now in the Zoom chat and your links for all sessions are included in your interactive programme. Also in the programme in the get in touch section is the team email address. Please get in touch to speak with the team. We welcome inquiries from any investors, developers or stakeholders who are interested in the projects mentioned over the course of the two days. Or if you would like more information about investing in Scotland, please do get in touch. We look forward to seeing you again shortly. Thank you. <laughs>